from using your wireless mouse the wrong way to not knowing how RGB can negatively affect your input delay. Here are some essential mouse optimizations you need to use. Please drop a like if it helps out and subscribe for more videos like this. Starting off, the majority of modern wireless gaming mice come with a wireless dongle, extender and a cable. But when setting up, most people make the mistake of plugging the dongle straight into their PC. Instead, you're supposed to connect the dongle dongle to the extender, then preferably connect those to the rear port slash backside of the PC, opposed to the front port as you'll get a more direct connection. After, ensure the receiver is in very close distance to the mouse as this is super important to fix latency and minimise signal interference. Next up, be sure to avoid your mouse entering low power mode. This occurs when the mouse battery percentage goes below 30, which reduces tracking speed and sensor acceleration potentially increasing latency in order to conserve the battery life of the mouse. So as a general rule of thumb, I recommend ensuring that the battery is above 30% charge at all times. I usually like to have mine above 50% to avoid that low power mode from being enabled. Next from that, you also want to avoid using RGB effects on your mouse. Now I know these might look cool with the various animations and lighting effects, however research has found that they do add slight latency. Running an RGB effect slash animation can take a great toll on the MCU as it requires a lot of processing power and will delay other processes. Just like when you play a game with extreme graphics while live streaming, your CPU can get overloaded and significantly decrease your frames per second, so you're better turning off those RGB effects. It's super simple, just head into your mouse's software, then go into the lighting section and literally just disable it inside of there. It's also why most modern and competitive mice like the Logitech G Pro Super Light 2 does not come with RGB. Their older mouses did used to have that, but the new ones just don't. But next from that, I want you guys to open up the Windows search menu and type in Control Panel. Inside there, if you select your view by to large icons, then select mouse. If you click on pointer options, then choose use default, what this will do is it'll reset your Windows mouse settings to default, which can fix a lot of issues like your mouse behaving unnaturally. This essentially resets it all to default and you'll notice your Windows mouse sensitivity will be back to default as well. But do be aware of this setting underneath this checkbox called Enhanced Pointer Precision. This right here is mouse acceleration and it'll make your aim extremely inconsistent. So to prevent that you want to make sure you're not using it via having it unchecked. Moving on, if you Google your mouse's software, so for example if I use a Logitech mouse I'll just type in Logitech mouse then software. If you then open it up, what I recommend doing in here is using a high DPI as this can prevent pixel skipping, where your aim may suddenly jump slash skip a pixel, which can occur more so on older generation mice. I do think at the very least for what it is a good idea to raise your DPI above 400, as that's quite an outdated DPI. That's also why a lot of pro players these days are using at least 800 to 1600 mouse DPI, and I made a video talking more about this subject on screen right now. If you are concerned though about raising your DPI and losing your your in-game sense, you can get your exact in-game sense easily. Just head over to my website and use the eDPI converter tool and you can basically keep your in-game sense the exact same but also increase your DPI. Along with increasing your mouse DPI though, I also recommend you increase your pollen rate or mouse hertz as doing this can prevent micro stutters while also lowering your input latency a ton. On the majority of gaming mice, the max hertz or mouse refresh rate is 1000 hertz however some can go higher. I know with final mouses I think their max is 2000 and then you've got the razor mouse that comes at like 8000 hertz. However I have heard that increasing the mouse hertz can one reduce your wireless mouse battery life and then two give you in-game stutters if you do have a low end PC. So with that considered I think the best spot right now is between 1000 hertz and 2000 hertz. While we are on the subject talking about hertz it's also a good idea to head into your monitor's settings which you can find within Windows, then ensure that you're using the highest refresh rate possible from this list, as this can significantly improve the smoothness of your mouse if you do have a high hertz monitor. After that though, you can go inside your device manager, under where it says mice and pointing devices. The top option should be your current gaming mouse, which what you can do is right click on it and select update driver. 
and then it'll give you an option to either update it or it'll simply inform you that you are using the most up-to-date driver already which you can see it has on my screen here from there though i also like to google a free software called usb device tree then simply download it and once you have opened it up you can see here you've got all of your devices and usb ports and inside here i like to ensure that all of my latency sensitive devices like my gaming mouse are plugged into the usb root hub which is located at the back of your computer as it's the motherboard having a direct connection to that will minimize latency and finally while you are playing games like fortnite for example if you go into the settings tab and go under video there should be some sort of windowed mode and you need to ensure you are using exclusive full screen mode as you can see from nvidia's findings on screen here it does massively reduce input delay other ones like windowed mode and windowed can actually increase this which we do not want in addition to that in your game settings if you scroll down to the bottom there may be two options like replays and energy saving modes for replays i recommend disabling the majority of these if you do want to get a slight fps boost and then with energy saving as well i recommend disabling both of these options as i've heard these options right here can also affect your fps so make sure to get rid of them moving on though i want to cover some bonus tips the first one is to clean your mouse's sensor there's a lot of dirty mouse sensors out there and by simply cleaning them this can fix a lot of mouse issues steel series have a great guide on how to clean your mouse in literally six easy steps which after following this it'll remove all the grime from the sensor and ensure that the mouse's sensor functions as it should in addition to that i recommend using a mouse mouse bungee if you are on a wired mouse as this can massively prevent any sort of dragging snagging and just overall make for a smoother glide of the mouse you can pick these up for pretty cheap on amazon and trust me they make the world of difference next from that i also recommend mouse grips uh, some mice actually come with these in the box i think a lot of razor mice do and these are something i do recommend applying as they can actually give you extra grip and in turn improve your aim in game but not only that they can also actually actually help your grip if you have very sweaty hands which a lot of people do and the last thing i want to cover is mouse weight reduction if you have any sort of removable components from your mouse which i do on my g pro wireless here you can see the little back puck i can simply remove this from the mouse and if i weigh both of them you can see that i do save a little bit of weight which having less weight makes your mouse feel lighter and also can improve your aim but that's all the tips i've got to help reduce your mouse's input delay if it helped please drop a like and subscribe for more and before you go feel free to check out any of my other videos on screen right now